Hi, everyone. Uh, as he said, my name is Dale. Um, I'll start off just by giving a little bit of background and showing and talking who I am, about who I am. So this is my family here, um, my wife Carrie and our four kids. And uh, this is our backyard. And I promise this will make sense as to why I'm showing you this here in a second. But basically, um, this is what our backyard when we started gardening. And this is what it looks like now. And through the process of building this, um, I learned a, a lot, obviously, and I had to memorize a lot, and I had to, I had to understand, you know, how far apart you place, uh, you space vegetables, how often you have to water them, how often you have to fertilize. Everything has different requirements. And in building this, I kept thinking software would make this so much easier. Um, I was carrying around all these books, you know, memorizing all this information, and, and there wasn't really a great app that made this easy. Um, but I've never, I never really coded much. Um, I've been around computers my whole life. I mean, I, I was building websites when I was 11 or 12, you know, just basic GeoCities type stuff, you know, but, you know, playing around with HTML, but nothing that I really considered serious enough that would allow me to build a mobile app. So, um, last year, I was out, uh, so again, just to give a little more context about the skills I had leading up to this, I've mostly done quality assurance throughout my career, also some product management, so I've done a lot of design and things like that, but, but again, the only code I'd ever done was small apps here and there that would go through a directory and rename a bunch of files or something like that, but nothing that, you know, I, I had this, I'd built this mountain out of something like building a mobile app would take, you know, this... Uh, you know, taking a lot of time to learn. I, I really had made this huge mountain out of building something like that. So I was out at lunch with, uh, with my team. Uh, Randy here is actually one of the people I was out at lunch with here. And um, I, was, I was complaining to them because I had been trying to find someone to help me build my mobile app for a while. And I was having a really hard time where people would be interested, but then they would kind of back out. And I was, it was just really wasn't getting much of a commitment. And uh, one of the guys um, said, well, why don't you do it? And uh, I guess I hadn't, I just hadn't really considered that. It, you know, I had I'd taken some programming classes in college and, and I failed at them. Like I got an F and dropped out of the class, failed. Um, you know, but it was, I was building a calculator in C++ and it was boring and I didn't, you know, I, I wasn't passionate about it. And, and I'm a little autistic and, I, and if, if I'm not passionate about something, I, you know, I can't learn it. I just, I've got to be obsessed about something to learn it. So. This, this was really the thing that got me passionate enough to think, okay, whenever he said, why don't you do it, I, I thought, okay, I'm going to. So I, uh, I started diving into learning how to code, and that's what I'm going to talk about mostly today, is, is how I learned to code, and, and, but first I want to show you the why I learned to code, because that's a big part of the how. So um, this is the mobile app that I released, uh, in, in, I guess it was a month ago now. And it looks different now. We just released an update yesterday that looks completely different. But the idea is still the same. You can choose whatever you want to grow. Um, whenever you choose, uh, it, it'll display details about how to grow that. It'll list companion plants that grow well next to it. You can look at the pest information for that plant and then tap on Amazon links to, to buy things that help with that pest. And that's the reason why I was able to make it a free app because I'm hoping that enough people download this app and use those links, then I can continue to have this as a free app. And uh, yeah, so, but anyway, um, yeah, what I'm here to talk about today is, is how I learned how to build this. So I'm going to go ahead and start in, and dive into that part. So um, there's, there's five basic steps that, that I've broken out in, 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 into how I learned here. So number one was get inspired. And I already talked about that. You know, I was inspired to build that. That was... That was the thing that kind of lit the fire for me. For, for you, you've got to find something, whatever it is. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, find something you're passionate about building and something you're excited about building because that will keep you focused on a goal because it's really easy to get overwhelmed. If you're just learning to code then, and you're just doing example projects one after another, then you'll end up with a pile of 15 different example projects and no idea what you want to build or, or where to start. And I was there for a long time. Um, number two, find a mentor. This is very important. And the big reason why it's done, I'll, I'll go into the details on, on all these here in a minute. So um, number three is to learn the foundational principles. So you've got to know what you're looking at in order to, to get started. So invest some time in doing that, and I'll talk about that as well. Um, find and learn a framework after that. So once you've learned the foundational principles, there's a lot of frameworks that make things easier now. This would have or my mobile app would have taken me a lot longer if I had to build everything from the ground up. So using a framework makes it a lot, easy, a lot easier. And then finally, uh, uh, just um, immerse yourself into it. And I'll talk about that as well. So with a mentor, 
here's what they're going to do for you. Number one, they're going to guide your learning path. There are so many different places you can go with development and so many different avenues you can go down that you can spend a lot of time obsessing over what do I learn. And I've done that for a long time. I've learned a little bit about a lot, and that really didn't get me very far in the past, or at least I didn't think it did. Um, they're also going to be there to answer your questions. So if you run into a problem, it's really good to have someone that you can go to that you know is going to have a solid answer for you. Uh, also, they're going to review your code. So um, my mentor, I have several of them up at my office. I have them read my code all the time, and they're able to spot errors and, and help me fix mistakes before they pile up, and I, you know, I'm able to you know, learn how to do things better as I go. And then uh, lastly, they're going to be there to encourage you because one of the things I've often dealt with with programming is I don't really, oftentimes I feel like I, I don't really know what I'm doing, you know, and um, I, I feel like I need to fully understand what I'm doing in order to actually be able to call myself a programmer or a developer. And there's all these mental tricks that your mind plays on you when you're learning to code. And, and they're going to be there to, to be that, um, what's the word? They're your barometer. They're going to let you know how you're doing. So when my mentors tell me, you're doing a great job, I'm really impressed that you're able to pick this up, like that makes me feel good, you know, and that tells me that I'm on the right path. And then also, if there's something that I need to, to know better or, you know, like they're going to help me know that as well. And they say, yeah, you're doing a great job on this, but you need to, you know, learn, learn a little bit more about this, you know, and, and just having that it really helps because it makes me feel confident that I'm not wasting my time, that I'm actually on the right path towards learning. So learning the foundation principles, that was the second step. Uh, obviously, this is a great place. You're already, you're already on, the, on the right path. So you're here today. This is where you're learning, you know, these types of things. Um, some of the other places I learned from, Code School is a great resource. Um, that's where I learned a lot of the basic JavaScript stuff. So just practicing with arrays, loops, things like that. Um, just getting comfortable with JavaScript again, writing, you know, declaring variables, types, things like that. Pluralsight, I love. It's my favorite resource. I watch so many Pluralsight videos. And the way that I do Pluralsight is once I identify what I want to learn, that's where I geek out and just go full in on. So um, the path that I went down with the mobile app you know, I guess this is the best time to go ahead and explain this. Um, I work at Surgical Care Affiliates, and all of our applications, or most of them, are uh, web applications written in the Angular framework. So I knew that I had a team of people around me that could help me with any Angular-type questions, so the thing that made the best sense for me to learn was Ionic, because it's a mobile technology that is backed, you know, by the Ionic framework. So. So anyway, I dove into Pluralsight videos on Angular, and I watched pretty much every one of them on Pluralsight, and a couple of them I watched probably eight times. The one, uh, the Getting Started one with Deborah Carrada is a really, really good, and it walks you through building a project from the very first line of code until the very end. And I would just redo it over and over until I would, I would go until I got stuck on it, and then once I got stuck, I would take, kind of take a break, and then um, start over from the beginning and then keep going until I got to that point where I was stuck again. And then usually I, it would make sense at that point and keep going. I just kept iterating through until I could go through and everything made sense. Um, also, YouTube. There's some great places on YouTube to go. West Boss has a JavaScript 30 course. I highly recommend it. It's really, really good. It takes you through 30 days of just basic JavaScript, JavaScript you know, array methods and functions and uh, just building little cool things with CSS. That's pretty cool. Uh, fun Fun Function is my favorite YouTube channel, I think. It's not really, it's not really tutorial based. It's more of high level concepts. So um, things like uh, why, do, why are things done a certain way? So um, for array methods in particular, he'll go through and show um, why, um, why, why, why you'd use one of the, like a map or reduce instead of a for loop or things like that. So I really like that one because he does a great job of giving the history and the timelines and things like that really make sense or really, uh, I really like that because I like to fully understand something. Um, so the, the next step after that is to find a framework. So again, I mentioned how I found the framework I was going to use for you. It could be completely different. It might be React, React Native. Um, it doesn't really matter. Like, like I mentioned before, don't, don't get too hung up on the fr framework. And for me, it was a matter of choosing the one that I knew I would have the most help for me in. So that was Angular because of where I work. So um, I already mentioned the Pluralsight videos. You know, that was how I kind of dove in to learn. Some other authors on Pluralsight that are really good are John Papa and John Son Sonmez. I think I said that right. 
Um, some other YouTube channels as well. Um, Level Up Tuts has a bunch of really good React videos and just overall JavaScript and CSS videos as well. And then a couple others here as well that were mostly for, for mobile. But um, the framework homepage is also a really good place to go. So on the Ionic homepage, they have all sorts of docs and tutorials, especially for UI components. Uh, you can go load any type of UI component you want and copy and paste it over. Uh, I may show some of that here in a little bit if we have time at the end. So uh, another, another great resource, Techlahoma events just like this. Uh, and this is also a great place to find a mentor. I've made a lot of really good friends through this organization. And um, there's a lot of people that, that I've learned, uh, that I've found that I really respect and, and I follow them on Twitter and I kind of read what they're doing and what they're learning and that helps guide my path as well. Um, so this is a really good place to, to, to find someone that'll, that'll help you. And then some other ways to learn. So I learned a long time ago that whenever I stare at a computer for too many hours in a day, it's gonna make my head go crazy. That's one of the big reasons why I started gardening. Um, so um, I don't want to spend too much of my time staring at a computer, but I also want to uh, be learning as, as much as I can. Um, well, that, that's, I don't know if I want to, it's just kind of my brain forces me to be that way. It's when I'm stuck on something, I really want to know everything about it. So one way to, um, to fill the non-screen time is podcasts. So a lot of time when I'm out in the garden, I'll listen to podcasts. And my favorite one is syntax. And it's... Um, Wes Boss, one of the guys I mentioned earlier, he's, he's on the podcast, and, and they do a really good job of explaining development things as well. So I listened to a lot of those episodes. Um, DevChat.tv is another uh, podcast producer that has really good stuff. And then lastly, um, so I found through all these podcasts and YouTube videos and Pluralsight videos and this whole ecosystem of people, as I found people, I would follow them on Twitter. And then um, I really hadn't found much use for Twitter before I started learning to code. I used it every now and then, but, but really I, I just didn't find much value in it. And what I did was I set my Twitter up to where I muted probably 50 words, um, the common things that came up that really related to politics or things I didn't want to hear about, to where my Twitter became nothing but things about coding from people that knew a lot about coding. So whenever I had five to 10 minutes where in the past I would go read the news, instead I would pull up Twitter and then just see what I could learn in that you know, five, 10 minute window, scroll through, and then someone that's put out a podcast or something generally is either re retweeted something that's interesting, maybe it's a Visual Studio Code tip for a shortcut that does something cool, or a blog post that's like the five ways to speed up your WordPress site, or you know, just random things that I can absorb quickly, and I just absorb those all throughout the day. So I have all these windows throughout the day where I, I'm not, you know, I'm waiting to pick up my kids from school and I've got like 10 to 15 minutes or something like that. Um, so, so that's kind of, that's what I mean earlier when I said immerse yourself, that's what I did. I just immersed myself in it and, um, I just kind of geeked out on it. So, and that pointed me to a lot of blogs as well. So, um, that's, that's what I mentioned with that as well. So uh, now I want to talk about some lessons learned through all this, because I came into this, like, like, like I mentioned with this idea of building a mobile app would be this huge thing that I would have to go like you know, climb this mountain and go like spend 30 days and learning. Like there's all this huge thing I had to do to learn, you know, like I'd built this huge thing out of it because I'd failed in the past and it had heavily influenced my opinion of it. So the first thing is that a lot has changed. It's way easier than it was. I, I put 10 years ago in this, but now I forget how old I am now. I guess it was 15 years ago, <laughs> a little depressing, but um, so, you know, back when I tried to learn back in college. So a lot has changed, it's so much easier now. You don't have to build everything from scratch. Whereas in the past, whenever I was learning how to code, if I, if I needed a grid on the page, I had to go build that grid from scratch. And now the frameworks have it built in for you. It's so much easier. I know it seems complicated when you first walk into the framework world because there's all these terms and all these different things and you don't know what does what, but they're there for a reason and the reason is to make it, it makes it so much easier. So um, I'll show again at the end of this how, uh, how easy it is to go through and build a mobile app using some of the UI components they have. So um, the next thing is, is patience and, and the power of walking away. So in the past, uh, whenever I would get stuck on a problem, specifically when I was trying to code, if I couldn't figure it out in an hour or two or in a day, I would get really, really mad at myself and I would get anxious and I would get frustrated and these I would start hearing these negative voices, you know, saying you're, you're never going to learn it, you just give up, you know, like, I mean, I hope you guys understand it. That's, that's kind of what happens. And, um, and what I've learned is that there's a lot of power in just walking away. 
So if you get stuck in a problem and it's more than 30 minutes to an hour, just get up and walk away and go do something mindless. So for me, that's watering the yard, you know, just like watering the plants, washing the dishes, just, just anything that doesn't involve thinking, you know, something that's just mindless. And that's the whole point. And you let that part of your brain relax. And, and when you come back to that problem, what happens is your brain has background threads that are running and your brain's still trying to figure it out. So when you come back to it and you give it your attention again, you're going to have some fresh ideas. And then you go off those fresh ideas and you try it again. And if it doesn't work again, then okay, you get up, you take another break and you iterate. And every time you come back, you've got a new idea. That's, that's how our brains work. And it took me a very long time to learn that and to learn just to get up and walk away and not spend all day stressed out on it and let it affect me. And then I like to, I mean, I would, I would get, you know, super anxious from it. And so, so that's one of the big things I learned. And to go along with that is don't get stuck. So if you're on a problem for more than, I give myself about an hour. Um, if I think I have a pretty good shot at it, I give about an hour. If I'm clueless on it, then I'm about, about 30 minutes. But the point is, don't get stuck. Um, if, 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 if you can't figure something out, you know, try walking away and then coming back. But if it takes too many times, reach out to someone. Reach out to your mentor and don't feel too proud to do that. I spent a lot of time when I first started learning how to code, wasting an entire day trying to get through something. And then I come into the office the next day and I, and I reach over to the, the guy that ne works next to me. I say, hey, Justin, you know, can you look at this for a second? And in 15 seconds, there's one line of code that solves everything. And I feel so silly because if I would have just messaged him the day before, he would have helped me with that same problem. And he doesn't think any less of me. And now that I know that trick, I can reuse it. So it's not that, um, I mean, th it, it, there is value in figuring things out on yourself. Don't don't ask for help on every single problem, but it's, it's a balance. You, you just want to make sure you're not too hard on yourself and you actually do ask for help. So don't obsess over picking the language and the framework. Um, it really doesn't matter that much. I mean, they're all really good. Just find whatever, whatever mo makes the most sense for you. We know whoever you have around you that can help, whatever framework you like. I mean, there's things I like about each of them. Um, you know, just, just don't, don't obsess over it because you can waste a lot of time doing that. Um, the next one is code some every day. So um, don't think that you need to build, you know, everything in, in chunks. Like it's okay to just work for, you know, work on something for an hour a day if that's all that you have. But the more that you use it, the better that you're going to get because it's just like learning a language. So the, the more that you do it, the, the better you're going to get at it. So do a little bit every day. Uh, you fight the imposter syndrome. So I mentioned before, you know, whenever you feel like you don't know what you're doing, uh, you just got to fight through that and you just got to ignore that and just um, keep going because you're going to figure it out. And then lastly, my prior experiences were way more valuable than I realized. And what I mean by that was I had a lifetime of experience, you know, trying to make my MySpace look cool, you know, doing CSS stuff and HTML stuff and trying to kick people off of, uh, off of AOL, you know, by downloading punters and and, you know, like just all those things that I was doing when I was a kid, like all, that's a lifetime of experience that translated into everything I do today. You know, like scripting stuff. Like I was obsessed with, with NASCAR video games when I was a kid and I spent all of my time trying to figure out how they worked and writing batch files that would go through and install new things. And just, you know, all these things that I had completely discounted um, are very valuable to what I do today. And really, the biggest thing I had to learn was JavaScript. The HTML and the CSS part, I mean, that was, that was easy. I already knew that. It was the JavaScript and the Angular part that I had to invest some time in. And that definitely took some time, I mean, especially the Angular part. But, um, but that, that's one of the biggest things that, that I picked up. So lastly, before I start sh jumping into code and showing all that stuff that I want to show, um, I want to leave you with this. And it's kind of a cheesy quote, maybe. but. Uh, code the change that you want to see in the world, because that's the idea that got me learning to code and to build my mobile app. Um, you know, in the past, I spent a lot of time worrying about what's going on in the world or thinking about the kind of world my kids are going to grow up in or just, you know, reading the headlines and, and, and all that got me nowhere. And I spent a lot of time and energy doing that. And now I take all of that time that I used to spend in, in doing that and I put it towards this. I put it towards this building a mobile app that helps people grow food. And every time I feel stressed about the world, I just try to ignore it and just go do something about gardening. And, and that's the way I look at it is I, you know, the only thing I can do is to work on trying to change it. And we have never had an opportunity like we have now in the world. And what I mean by that is at the click of a button, you, you are in front of billions of people in the app store. 
and it costs 100 bucks a year for Apple and it's like 30 bucks a year for Google. And that's literally all it takes, that and a little bit of time and some code. And you can put ideas in front of the whole world. So now, you know, I work with uh, kids and, and, and high school kids and I try and get them excited about coding and gardening and, and it's, I, I feel like I have an outlet for all of that energy that I feel that boils up when you see the headlines and, 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 and all that, you know, I have an outlet for all of it. And, and that's the thing I, I wanted to leave, you know, everyone with before I show the code is that's why I started learning how to code and that's where, where, where I, what I would love to see is whenever you have an idea about something that you think could be a little bit better in the world, find a way to make a mobile app that does it and then do it. Because I really believe, you know, software has the power to change the world. I mean, we're seeing that. Look at, I mean, the world is being flipped on its head with software. The, you know, Uber's the largest taxi company in the world. They own zero cars. It's, it's all software. So we have, we have this huge opportunity right at our hands and use that as an inspiration to get started. Because the, at the finish line, I, I started learning how to code. It was the end of, so I had a bit of a heat stroke in the middle of July. And up until that point, I had aspirations of buying like 10 acres and starting an organic farm. And I felt like I was given a sign that maybe that wasn't the best thing for me and I needed to, to think about building my, mo my, my, bo my, my mobile app. That was kind of part of what went, in, what went into it. But, um, but it, it, anyway, you know, the point is I just started last year, so it doesn't take years and years to get to the point. I mean, we, I had a working version of the mobile app by September. Now it took us a lot of time that there was a, we have 60 vegetables in the app and it took a lot of time to type about vegetables, but the code part was done in like two or three months. So it's not something that, you know, it's going to take you years to get there. It can be right there. These frameworks make it so easy. And there's this whole ecosystem here. They're willing to help you, including me. I and mean, you can find me on Twitter right here. Reach out to me anytime you get stuck on a problem. I'll be your mentor. I'll help you out. And there's a whole lot of people just like me that are here in this community that will do the same thing. So I want to go ahead and show now um, some code. So I'm going to go ahead and show part of my app. And what I'm hoping to do is come back here in, um, I'm not sure when, but at some point I want to come back and go through and actually uh, go through and build a mobile app, an Ionic app from scratch. So go through, create a project, build something, and then do that over the course of an hour. So that's what I want to do. But before I do that, um, I want to show the types of things that you need to be familiar with before I do, before I come back and do that. So that's kind of the way I plan to hope the, 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 for this to work. I hope it works out that way. Um, so I'm going to start by showing my mobile app and just kind of walking through what it is I'm going to be showing. And then uh, we'll just kind of go from there. So if you have questions anywhere along the way, uh, please feel free to throw them out there. Help, help guide me through this to make sure that I'm actually making sense here. Um, when you get really familiar with code, sometimes you look at things and it just makes sense, but it doesn't to someone else. So please do not hesitate to reach out and let me know if I need to slow down or explain something. So what you saw me just do was kick off the, I, I, the Ionic server. So, well, that isn't good. Okay. So what I thought you saw, but you did not see, was me just typing Ionic serve, and that just kicks off the Ionic server so that I can launch a browser window here, and I can see my app. So if I go into DevTools here, and then go into this button here, it lets me emulate a mobile device. So now I'm at the point where I can pretty much see how my app would look right here. So I can go through and I can click on it just like I would tap. I can go through, I can use the app just like I would. So I'm gonna show this page first, just the home page. So going over to the code again, and here's the, uh, the HTML. Another thing I wanna go ahead and mention, invest some time in learning shortcuts because it saves you so much time. So like we, you saw me do, like control B, collapse that over there. Uh, you can switch pages with control P and start typing and go between pages. Like there's just all these different shortcuts you can use in Visual Studio Code or whatever editor you're using. Take the time to learn them because it does make a big difference. And I'll, uh, when I come back especially, I'll show some of the most important ones uh, that I've learned because there's some that, that really make a big difference. So we've got here the HTML file and this is for the home page. 
And uh, I mean, you, you guys are familiar with HTML, right? I mean, this all makes sense. Is there anything on here that doesn't make sense so far? Maybe there's some Angular stuff in here I, I, that wouldn't make sense, like down, um, probably right in here. Okay, so let's look at this stuff, because this is probably the stuff that, oh yeah, how do I do it, hold on. I guess I can just do uh, this. Okay, we good now? Okay, so this code here, this is probably the stuff that doesn't make sense out of it. And this is the Angular part of it. So um, all this is saying, this ng4, is it's building a loop. So this is the same as a JavaScript loop. So it's saying for each item in filtered lists, and I'll get to that in a minute showing the JavaScript. But basically it's just saying, in, out of each vegetable, show you know one of these uh, little sections. So a thumbnail with a rounded image, and then a header, and then this. So I'll switch back over so you can see the code again, so you can see what that actually is. Each one of these is the, is the ion item that's being replicated. So that's literally how you control the view of the mobile app. So if you know HTML, then you can do that. And let me show you where I get the components from. Because this is one of the really cool things about Ionic. Can you... Okay, so if you go to the Onic homepage, check this out. They have this little emulator over on the right. I can go through and choose anything that I want to build. So you can see my app over here has a list. This is how I built it. I came over here, I chose list, I found what I wanted to build. So I started scrolling through here, and over on the right, that emulator will change to show. So I went through, and then I found, okay, it's starting to look about what I want. So I found this. And that's an avatar. I like the thumbnails better because they take up more space. There we go. So I took this code right here, copied and pasted it over, changed the paths, and then that's literally all I had to do. So I don't have to be some d design expert or UI expert. I just have to know what looks good. And to do that, I just scroll this thing. So if you need a grid, you can come over here. It shows you the code for how to make different grids. If you need an alert to pop up, you know, here's the code how to do a basic alert. This is what I'm talking about, the power of the frameworks. It makes these things so easy. I don't have to go learn all that stuff. I, I can focus on the things that, that I want to build. Um, I'm not going to show you everything in here, but you get the idea. Just You can look over here. Here's a search bar. Literally for everything in my app, I was able to just pull code from here. And what I started with was just taking some of these you know, sample, uh, some of the sample code, pasting it over into my project, and then just changing things and learning how things work that way. That's how I've always been able to learn, just by taking something apart and then kind of putting it back together and then I can understand how it works. So, so that's how I built the UI of my app. That's, it's, like I said, it's as simple as learning HTML. Um, do you guys know CSS yet? Does that stuff make sense to you? Okay. As anyone doesn't understand CSS, I can just briefly go over it, but okay. Um, so that's, what's that? Sorry there. So that's what controls all of the styling on the app. Um, so then once you, if you know that part, then all that's left is knowing how the JavaScript works and how the project is laid out. I guess I can show some of that here. That would probably help make sense to everyone. Um, you don't really have to know all of this because a lot of this is built for you. Um, the really cool thing about Ionic, and I'll show this when I come back, is to start a, a new project is as simple as Ionic start, I think is the command, and it scaffolds out a lot of this for you with some dummy data and some placeholder data and stuff like that with three tabs at the bottom, or if you want a menu, it'll scaffold out a menu app. But basically this is the structure. So the only really folder I even pay attention to in here outside of the root is source. And then I've got broken out you know, app is kind of the main application logic, but then all the stuff I've written is here under pages. And you generate these pages again through the CLI. So there's a command, just ionic generate page and then the name of it. And it puts the page in here for you and it even adds it to the app module, um, which is kind of an angular thing, but you know, just the, the loading of that page. It, the point is it does a lot of things for you. So I just have the pages laid out here and then each page or each folder has the HTML the, uh, the app, the, the module, which I'm not going to go into too much detail, that's an Angular thing, and then the, the, the JavaScript for it. So now I'm going to switch over and show some of the JavaScript. 
How much have you all done on JavaScript? Okay. <laughs> I know that's a very really hard question to ask. I need to find a way to better phrase it. Um, but basically, this is how... Everyone see that? Okay, so the JavaScript, this is how Angular is laid out. So these are just the import statements. This is what pull, This is me pulling in what I'm using on that page. So most of this stuff is pages from within the app. I'm using some Lodash to do some linking stuff. And then this is some Ionic stuff and some, some Angular stuff here. Um, this is just designating as a decorator, designating as Ionic page. That's part of the uh, Ionic framework. Um, just a, just a, a, something you have to follow for Ionic. Um, and then, you know, as I scroll through here, you can see it's really not all that complicated. It's, uh, it's really following a lot of Angular things. I'm loading the vegetables from a service, using some dependency injection. Um, so this is where, you know, this part of it, you're going to have to learn Angular in order to understand how, how this is working. And there's a lot of, but there's a lot of things that make this really easy about Angular too, because there's life cycles. So like this ng on init. Um, all this means is this is the first code that's run whenever this page is initialized. So it makes it easy to control things like that. So you don't have to have like a control loop where you have, make sure you have functions that are called before other things. Like the, the great thing about Angular and how some of these other like reaction, you know, these other frameworks work is they allow you to separate that stuff out. So, and also I don't have to write a lot of code multiple times. So the way that these, ser these pest services work, I have a pest service that will um, give me the list of pests here. Like here's my list of pests that I've got. But the point is, I don't have to have code that has those pests, you know, all throughout. I have one place where I just inject that service into each TypeScript file that I'm using, and then it's available within that file. So you can see when it loads, I get my list of vegetables, I get my list of pests, and then I've got some filter list logic. I'm not going to go into too much detail on, on the TypeScript. I'll, whenever I come back and we do the full Ionic example, I'll go into and we'll show how some of this works. But um, but hope, hopefully that makes sense. And, and, and the cool thing too is when you're doing debugging or anything like that, you can just use browser tools. So, um, you know, you can come in here and use the inspector the same way that you would use when you're building websites. It's really no different. Once you get the, the app going, it's really no different than building a, a website, but you're able to build a mobile app. So, and I had no idea it was this simple. I mean, I mean the HTML and CSS part of it at least. Um, you know, I, I, my, my exposure to building mobile apps in the past was this complicated interface in Xcode that had a million buttons and I, I didn't even know where to start and same with Visual Studio and I, I didn't know that it was simple as two commands and then you're off and running with HTML and then once I learned that I was like, okay, I can do that, let's, let's play, you know, like that was, I felt super empowered because I'd been doing HTML my whole life, so. Anyway, that's really the bulk of, of, of what I wanted to show and talk about today. Again, when I come back, we'll go through and we'll build something, um, you know, over the course of an hour. We'll go through, so, you know, have your laptops and all that, and we'll go through and build something from the beginning until, until the end. So you can walk away with, you know, having built your first mobile app. So you, you won't be able to get it in the store. That's a whole other story, and that does get complicated. And that's one of the reasons why it's so good to have this type of community, because I ran into... Just error message that I could barely even understand what it was that was telling me in Xcode. And I, and I just throw it out on Twitter and within five seconds I've got someone from within the community that points me to a resource. So um, that part of it gets complicated is, you know, once you're dealing with getting into the stores and all that kind of stuff. But this part of it is super simple. Just, you know, you're off and running. Are there any questions or anything? Anything you want to see more about or hear more about? Go ahead, Kimberly. Yeah, so really it just boiled down to the fact that it was backed by Angular and that we use Angular up, up, up at my office. So, um, I, you know, I've, I've also been transitioning into a development role at the office. So it's a lot easier for me whenever I'm coding in Angular during the day and then I go home and then I'm coding in Angular at night. It's if you're switching back and forth. So if I would have chosen Xamarin, for example, it's, it's, I tried doing context switching where I was doing a little bit of C Sharp work about a month or two ago and it was really, really hard to go back and forth. Whereas in Angular, I felt really comfortable because I knew, you know, I've, I've been living in it for a few months now and I felt like I understand how everything works and I've dealt with a lot of errors and I've learned how to overcome them. But, um, so that's why I chose um, Ionic, just simply because of it. But if, if I, so if I didn't have coworkers that, that you know, if, if, we, if I didn't have the Angular situation and I was just picking something from scratch, 
I would go with React Native. And the reason for that is because it's actually a, a native app, whereas Ionic is not. Um, but I, I've, I haven't been able to tell a difference at all in my app. I mean, uh, I had some performance issues in the beginning, but it was because I had some HTML that was wrong. So once I, find, once I found that out and I was actually doing things the right way, it's really snappy, it's performant. Uh, it's really cool too because Ionic has this whole system where you can push code out without an update to the app. So I can push code out to people um, anytime I want and it'll download in the background when they open the app and then the next time they reopen it, they have that new version. So like being able to do things like that is awesome. And that's all built into Ionic and Ionic has a really good team behind them. So, um, but I think if I were beginning, I would probably do it with React Native just because you know, the native part of it, and it seems to have a little more support behind it, but this stuff changes every six months, so it, it, it could be something completely different. View may have a mobile, I, it changes all the time. Again, that's why you don't get caught up in frameworks. Just keep pedaling towards something, and they're all close enough, in a, enough, uh, close enough related that you're gonna be progressing towards your goal, no matter which framework you choose. Go ahead, yeah. Yeah, great question. So the question was, um, if I built this in JavaScript, what you know, how does it get into Swift? So what Ionic has is they um, they have build tools in the framework. So just with a command, I can do a release, and then I can designate either iOS or Android. And then for iOS, it's going to generate the whole folder structure for an Xcode project. And then for that part, you do have to have a Mac. So you have to open that up on a Mac in Xcode. Um, and then you've got to, and then you got to go through and compile it from there for the store and upload to the store. And then for Android, it's very similar, except you can do it from Windows or Mac. So then you just build out an Android release, and you have to have Android Studio installed on that computer, and it uses it. And then it generates an APK file. And then you've got to follow these other steps where you like encrypt it and do this. Like that's where it gets complicated. That's where reach out to me, and I'll help you with it when if you get to that part, or when you get to that part, I'll say. Um, but, but yeah, so they, just, they build that for you. That's, that's the beauty of Ionic is you have one code base and it generates, and let me show you this part. So right now I'm turned, I'm on the uh, iPhone part. So right now the simulator is set for iPhone. If I switch it over to a Nexus, well, Nexus 7, that doesn't look, let me find something that's a Galaxy S5, for example, and I refresh the page. So now see how the buttons look different and the tabs look different and the menu looks different. Like it looks like an Android app now. That's what Ionic does for you. So they have all these UI elements that are different for the device. And you don't have to worry about any of it. All that happens automatically. Now you can override it. Like there's a couple places where I've set the styling to be specific no matter what it is. Um, but it's really rare that I do that because I like to lean on that. Because if I start messing with that too much, then I'm in charge of it. And then if there's an update, like, you know, when the iPhone X came out, all I had to do was like change a couple of lines of code and recompile and it worked. So um, that's the great thing about these frameworks is basically the way I view the framework is I have a whole development team working with me that's building the bulk of the app and then I'm just doing the customization on it. Um, so if you think about it that way, it's a really powerful way to, to do a lot on your own. Because I was able to build pretty much this whole app pretty much by myself. I mean, I had a little bit of help from coworkers here and there when I ran into problems. Um, my wife, actually, I taught her JSON. She's a, she's a nurse, no software development or really technical experience, much outside of being a professor, so she has to know Excel for that. But I taught her JSON, and she went through, and she has pretty much owned this entire file here. Can, why can you never type whenever people are watching? It's, it's a universal truth about life. But this... This, I mean, then this has some, I mean, it's not too complicated, but there's sub nodes of objects, you know, and like she picked this up in like a week and then, so she manages all this. So, um, so yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. Like how easy this stuff is now. And, and that, that's one of the big messages I want, I want you to take away from this. Like if you've built a mountain out of it, knock it down because you can just go right through it. It's not, it doesn't, it's not what it used to be, thankfully. Any other questions?